Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The reason why I use the name Christ and not Jesus is because Jesus often refers to the historical Jesus. The Jesus who lived in first century Palestine, the Jesus who taught in parables, the Jesus who worked miracles, the Jesus who chose disciples, the Jesus who was condemned, who was scourged, who was nailed to the cross, who died and was laid in the tomb. And three days later, as he promised on this Easter Sunday, the Christ is now risen. The word Christ refers to the anointed one of God. When Peter is asked, along with the other disciples, the identity of Jesus in Mark chapter 8 verses 27 to 30, he responds by telling Jesus that Jesus is the Christ. However, the answer which Peter gave at that time during the lifetime of Jesus was an incomplete answer. It had to be completed by Jesus going to the cross, by Jesus dying on the cross, by Jesus being laid in the tomb, and by Jesus being raised and becoming the Christ after his crucifixion, after his death, and now in his resurrection. The evangelists are trying to come to terms with this earth-shattering event. And I ask you to make a small meditation. And the meditation is this. Imagine that someone you know is blind and has been unfortunately blind from birth. And that person has heard about the color green. And the person asks you, I have heard about this color green. Could you please explain to me what the color green means? And you make an attempt and you say, green is a color that is soothing to the eyes. And the person says, but I cannot see. And you say, green is as soothing as soft music. Is it really so? Green is what trees have on their leaves. I can feel the leaf, the person says to you, but I cannot see. After some time you realize that in order for the person to experience the color green in its entirety, the person has to see. Explanations will always fall short. Explanations will always be inadequate and sometimes explanations may not really say what the reality is. And so one day the person might recover his or her sight and hears soft music and because you explained the color green as soft music might imagine that that is the color green. So words are good to communicate a message but words fall short and we must keep this in mind and the evangelists are very aware of this. So when they write their resurrection stories, they use two kinds of stories to communicate the message of the resurrection. One kind which is found in all the four gospels is known as the empty tomb episodes. Either one woman, like in the Gospel of John, only Mary Magdalene. Two women, like in the Gospel of Mark, 
three women like in the gospel of Matthew and many women like in the gospel of Luke go to the tomb on Sunday morning and for a variety of reasons and they find the tomb empty. There is no one there. The body of Jesus which had laid in the tomb which was buried in the tomb is not there any longer. And they wonder what to make of this. The empty tomb narratives or the empty tomb stories are saying to us that it was the same Jesus who was buried in the tomb who is not there now. It was not a different Jesus. The Jesus who died in the cross and was laid in the tomb is now not in the tomb. The second kind of resurrection stories which the evangelists use is known as the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus after he was raised from the dead in the longer ending of Mark in the Gospels of Matthew, Luke and John Jesus appears to the disciples. John has two whole chapters dedicated to the resurrection and Jesus appears to the disciples at least three times when they are together and when there are seven of them at Lake Tiberias. The post-resurrection appearances are saying to us that yes, it was Jesus who died, but now Jesus is the risen Christ. So there is a difference. There is no same. It is not the same historical Jesus who ate and drank and lived in first century Palestine. Now it is the risen Christ. And though this risen Christ can be recognized because the risen Christ has a body and can eat a piece of broiled fish. The risen Christ is also different because the risen Christ can appear and disappear at will. So if the empty tomb episodes stress sameness, the same Jesus who died is not there now, the post-resurrection appearances stress difference. It is now not the historical Jesus whom we encounter. It is the risen Christ. However, both these episodes when read together, when experienced together, stress the one and only important theme of the resurrection and it is hope. Hope is never hopeless. When Jesus was crucified on the cross, in all the synoptic gospels, none of the disciples remained. It was only a group of women who were also his disciples, standing far off, who remained in spirit with the Lord. It is only his mother who remained with him in the Gospel of John, along with a beloved disciple. But the ten, the eleven, did not remain and all ran away. They had given up hope. They had heard Jesus say that he would rise again. They had heard Jesus say that he would come again. They had heard Jesus say that death would never be the end. And yet, even after the passion and resurrection predictions in which Jesus was so emphatic of what would happen to him, the disciples gave in to despair. The disciples lost hope. In the Gospel of Luke, we are told about two disciples walking away from Jerusalem to Emmaus because they had lost hope. In the Gospel of Luke, very clearly, the disciples are told that they must remain in Jerusalem and whatever has to happen after the death of Jesus will happen in Jerusalem. So any movement away from Jerusalem like the two disciples did is a movement away from hope and to hopelessness to despair. 
when the disciples are in the upper room in the Gospel of John without Thomas, they are unable to believe that the Lord has indeed been raised, even though he breathes on them this risen spirit. And so the disciples are living in a situation in which they have given up, in which they have lost hope, in which they say that there is no point in continuing. And that is why in the Gospel of John they are up with the doors shut because they are afraid. Their leader they saw being crucified on the cross. Their leader they saw being scourged and taunted. Their leader they know was buried in a tomb. What remains now? Why should we be optimistic? Why should we be positive? Why should we continue to have hope? And even in their hopelessness, even in their despair, even as the disciples walk to Emmaus, even as the disciples shut the doors of the room and of their hearts, Jesus appears. And Jesus appears giving this one beautiful gift. The gift of Easter. The gift of hope. And we know in the Acts of the Apostles the same frightened disciples. The same disciples who ran away at the slightest sign of trouble. The same denier Peter. The same other ten who would be in living in trepidation and and hiding are now disciples who become courageous, disciples who become bold, disciples who are strengthened and fortified by the Christ who gives hope. The feast of Easter, according to me, can be seen as an acronym where every alphabet in the word Easter stands for a word. And so for me, Easter means every. The E in Easter stands for every. The A stands for area. The S stands for starts. The T stands for two. And the E stands for enter. And the R for renewal. So E A S T E R means Every area starts to enter renewal. And the renewal is because now the Jesus has become the risen Christ. The renewal is now because I have become a new creation. The renewal is now because now there is no more fear. There is no more limit. There is no more doubt. There is only faith. There is only hope. And there is only love. And like Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians, meanwhile these three remain faith, hope and love. As we celebrate this beautiful feast of the resurrection of the Lord, as we encounter the empty tomb, and as we experience that it is the same Jesus who is not in the tomb, let us never look for him in the empty tomb. Let us know that the empty tomb will continue to remain empty. Let us never, like the two disciples, want to walk toward a mouse, giving in to despair, losing hope. Let us not, like the disciples in the Gospel of John, Close the doors of our homes and of our hearts. Let us instead be courageous like the women in the Gospel of John, like the women in the Synoptic Gospels who dared to continue to stand by the foot of the cross or away from the cross and watch from a distance and continue to have the hope of the resurrection. At those times in our lives, 
when we are tempted to give in to despair, when we think that death is the end, when we are faced with some calamity, whether it is a terminal illness, whether it is a failure in some area of our life, when we are tempted to throw in the towel, when we are tempted to give up, let us remember that the empty tomb is never the place where we look for because now we keep encountering the risen Christ. May every area in your life enter renewal as you celebrate Easter. A very happy feast of Easter to everyone.